This groundbreaking series features Dr. Jerry King, who has been involved in critical fluid technology for over 50 years with an intense focus on super and subcritical CO2 extraction. He has published over 250 papers primarily in this area and comes to extraction consulting after retiring from the USDA. Additionally, we are featuring Dr. John McKay, perhaps the most notable expert on extraction science in the cannabis industry, who after a very successful career with Waters Corporation, has made the full dive into consulting in the cannabis extraction sciences. So some of the major components that Dr. King was speaking about is starts off with CBGA. And CBGA is the major compound that the plant makes. So when you look at a different variety, a different variety will have a different ratio, for example, of the synthesis and will make a different ratio of the major components. And so, as you see further here, we have terpenes, and CO2 is very effective at extracting these essential oils and these terpene components. Also, it's very effective in extracting lipid and non-polar to moderately polar what I'll call solutes, or targeted compounds in this case. But at some point, CO2 reaches its upper limit, and unless you intend to go to very, very high pressures of CO2, usually, the use of a compatible co-solvent is advocated, such as uh, John mentioned, which would be ethanol. On the other hand, uh, the selectivity of CO2 sort of peters out at some point, and water becomes a more preferred component to extract very, very polar components. And primarily, this is a useful guide to understanding why things extract uh, at a certain uh, way um, at a certain pressure and a certain density of CO2 and, and temperature, you're trying to match the extraction fluid and its characteristics with respect to polarity, i.e. solubility parameters, with those that are characteristic of your target compound, such as your terpenes and your cannabinoids. So as we start to introduce solubility, in this chart on the left-hand side, we're looking at the um, molar solubility. And across the bottom, we're looking at different pressures. The red line goes from the, the uh, left chart because it's going from um, zero to three. The one on the right side is going from zero to five. So I put the, the red line in just a visual to know on the same sort of scale. As this industry matures, cramming feedstock into an extractor and running parameters you picked up off the internet it's not going to be a sustainable business model. A few percentage points of improved efficiency per run over the course of a year will translate to significant revenues that just can't be ignored. Whether you're using CO2 extraction or a more traditional chemical liquid solvent such as ethanol, post-CO2 extraction processing is very prevalent in this industry. The mass balance implies that somewhere along the line you're going to have to track the extent of extraction uh, in the final extract and also you'll want to determine uh, what was possibly left um, in the material remaining in the extractor vessel. And this implies analysis of some sort and particularly in one of the uh, Sec sections yet to come in this series, we're going to give you some examples of analytical tools that allow you to do this. We can assist with full lab build-outs or the support of an ongoing operation such as consumables management and procurement. And we have a full bundle of consulting services including private on-site visits from Dr. King and Dr. McKay. We would like to thank Eden Labs, Orange Photonics, Steep Hill Labs, G Pharma Labs, and Fritch International for making this series possible.